So the uh, topic is a fairly simple one. Uh, so as, a, as the LibATA maintainer, uh, every time we, we add uh, new features, so SCSI and then uh, ATA layer, uh, we often these days get in trouble with old stuff, which is parallel ATA ID drives. So question is, how long are we going to keep that uh, given that these are not hardware that you can buy anymore. So recently, for example, I've been building a, a test rig for parallel ITA for to be able to test stuff. And the only drives I could find uh, out there are like 16 years old new drive. They, they're, they've been packaged for more than 15 years. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing you can find these days. So how long do we keep that stuff? So I've been asking people around, and I know, for example, Christoph uh, Helwig is uh, currently opposed to removing parallel ITA, saying that there's a lot of hobbyists that are still uh, interested in, in keeping that around. Uh, my question is, yeah, sure, it's, it's fun to be able to run the latest and greatest kernel on all hardware, but do you really need to do that? So. Removing all of that would simplify a lot of things in LibATA, uh, would make my life easier as a maintainer, and uh, would avoid a lot of breakage I'm seeing uh, uh, recently with new feature being added that suddenly breaks these old drives. So you're asking something that basically is being debated about old hardware. Ar Arnd is doing a lot of this. Sorry, uh, can, can you speak up, please? Apparently not. Ah, thank you. So there's a lot of debate about what we should be doing with old hardware. But while we support old hardware, things like peer risk and all of the other weird and wonderful stuff, we have to support the devices and drivers that came with them at the point they stopped being produced. And the rule for old hardware seems to be that as long as it has an enthusiast community, we still have to support it. And that means that unfortunately, if there's a, an intersection between enthusiast community, old hardware, and PATA, we have to support that as well. We can't pull the rug from under them because they'll get really annoyed. Yes but I don't think so there is. Because um, most of the old hardware is, um, it's me, yeah. Um, right, uh, mo most of the old hardware, well, those I know of, happily um, are using different things. To either SCSI or parallel SCSI, that's for the more enter-classy things, or um, some other, whatever, some, uh, some Amiga stuff, whatever they do. Just a, r just a random question though. What are we constrained with which architectures actually, you know, we're talking about here that would use this? Is, is there some f funky architecture other than x86 that, you know? No, no, that doesn't depend on the architecture. So it's I, it's I a purely that. driver I, thing. I'm, so I'm, trying to, I'm trying to ask whether or not this is a problem only for x86, because if it is, then you can actually just use some sort of ACPI, you know, uh, flag to basically create a, a le legacy type of, you know, flag to clear a platform and ensure that it's not there. So at least at runtime, then it becomes deprecated but you still have the code present. Exactly, but the problem is the code that um, PATA support is quite a lot of code. I would guess it's about, what, three quarters of the entire LibATA um, source code. Just for uh, uh, Yeah, and everything is, is uh, supported through the, the same interface, so which makes e every function, the first thing essentially every function is doing is starting looking at, is it a, is it a master, master slave thing uh, for parallel ITA or is it SATA queuing? Uh, everything is complicated because of, the, of that. Yeah. So and that is. And really you have a ton of drivers that, personally, I cannot test. Uh, so what you're telling us is we shouldn't have unified libata and pata. We should have just kept them separate as they originally were. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's yeah, even probably harder to do now. That definitely something I don't want to touch. But. <laughs> But there are definitely a, class, a set of machines that still need the PATA interface. So what happened really? is, can, you, can you name one? All of the really, really early machines were SCSI. So some of the 8-bit SCSI interfaces are still in the older ones. And then the enterprise still kept its SCSI and never adopted APA. But there are some hobbyist machines like Commodore machines and some of the other weird and wonderful sort of older platforms that actually are PATA. And as long as we have a hobbyist community around those, we're still going to need to support them somehow. I, and that is the problem, so I, because the real problem here is not so much the H HBAs or the adapters, you get plenty of those, yeah, right, granted. But you need to connect something to it. Well, they and all that's have their old drives. drives. Sorry? They all have their old drives, and accidentally some of the old drives haven't gone pop. Um, well, I, 
I mean, yes, they do. I I've, I've got eight bit SCSI drives that are still rotating. Okay. Okay, so. So, but, uh, but I mean, this is, uh, but this is something which will continue to bug us forever and ever. Right, because. It sounds like the problem that you're trying to solve is you want this to, to be a lot less as a maintenance problem and an ongoing evolution of the subsystem problem. Uh, well, yes. a ATA uh, and evolution is kind of, uh, I'm, I'm not right. sure I want to use those so two words the in the same sentence, but. <laughs> that's the point. The interface is now fixed. Nobody will have a drive that supports more commands or more anything else. It's all off in the legacy bucket. So all you wanted to do is stop, the e uh, stop impacting the evolution of SAPA. Yes. Right, so what we probably really well, need to do no. Is so the 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 parallel ATA being there is is not actually stopping any evolution of, of the SATA side of the serial side. Uh, we can we can still uh, add new features, and, and, and we are doing that. The problem is every time we add a new feature, um, so ATA as it is designed, you will uh, normally discover the feature. So you read some log page. Uh, to discover if the, the, uh, the new feature is supported or not, and the drive will tell you. Uh, but by doing that, you create this new access, for example, to the log page, that is fine with modern SATA drives, because if the, the feature or the page is not supported, you get back an error, and, and, and that's the end of it. But uh, all the drive just break. They are suddenly not going to work or, or hang, or the adapter is going to uh, completely hang, and I've been hit by uh, with, with such problems uh, uh, several times in the last uh, two, three cycles. But um, you just, unfortunately, just contradicted yourself. Well, no, it's it's really because really if really you if you your one arguing point is that there is no hardware out there which is doing PATA, then clearly they can't break because they don't exist anymore. No, but the, the point is that uh, um, the new feature coming to the latest Ingrid's kernel. Those people with all hardware, do they really need to run that kernel, which doesn't yeah, actually that's, that's work anymore with no, no, parallel ATA? That's fun of it. They all, a lot, all of the active maintained communities for old hardware run new kernels. We can't tell them not to do that. Yeah. Just call them Finn Tyne, who is running one <laughs> M M68K on some but random hardware. Isn't there another solution to your problem, which is you said that it's basically to do with the inquiry pages. And you don't need to send the inquiry pages if you already know that you're attaching to an old driver. No, no, it's the, the main issue is that to know about the feature, you need to send that inquiry. But you don't. You've already said that. Particular, if, if we put a flag in all the PATA drivers that said, I'm a PATA driver, you already know by the driver that's running your system that you don't need to send the inquiry. <sighs> yeah, the issue, though, it doesn't really fit how the, how the standard is written. But the issue isn't following the standard. Because you, we remember SATA and, and, well, it's ATMS, but essentially when you say parallel ATA, we're talking about ID, that's the transport layer, that's not the protocol layer. But, uh, but Which becomes a mess because when you come to SATA, you actually are now in CQ and that's actually coding in the protocol. Um, uh, it's not really the transport, it is also the transport, but it's, it's me it becomes messy. Right, but we know how to, uh, we know how to cope with this. We've in SCSI, we've gone through the deprecation of the old uh, read-write commands, and that worked reasonably well. We, we use flags to say, you know, you don't do this, you do do this for this drive. And so there, there are heuristic ways of allowing, uh, allowing the inquiry problem not to impact you. And as long as it's not holding back development of the SATA subsystem, just do some sort of flag thing, call it done, stick it off in a corner, and then yeah, just go on. Some, okay, some yeah, so basically, basically uh, create uh, essentially a class of like legacy hardware and you, you just new stuff, don't touch those, yeah. those devices. So essentially we would need to have the inverse of the current a ATA workage. Um, because currently we do have per device flags, but they need to be actively set per device. We can't invert that mechanism. But that, that can be, well there is already a um, well, uh, the, the the ATA SATA flag and it if it's it not set, you know it's not SATA. So. Yes, so uh, uh, and I guess th this might be an idea. How, how that, we that is, yeah, actually a good idea to, to deal with these issues because, so, because yeah, I, uh, really I, I'm every other week I'm, I'm getting a bugzilla mm -hmm. about someone complaining that their old parallel ATA laptop or whatever got broken or is not working with the latest kernel. So, 
Yeah, but I mean, as long as people are running the stuff and have active active hardware, we shouldn't really discourage them. So um, okay. I'm fully with James there that, that as long as there are users, we should continue supporting those users. They certainly, surely don't, don't need the latest feature we do put in, but they should be able to use the latest kernel. That's for sure. Only if there are no users, then we can easily, then we should be going ahead and deleting that driver because that's just essentially just bit rot and really should be removed. Yeah, do everything you can do to get away from the maintenance burden. Just shovel them off in a corner somewhere, but don't, don't deliberately break them. Got it. Okay, I'll yes. work on that then. Is, it, uh, is there any way that we could do something sort of the reverse of staging where we have like frozen older drivers for this kind of thing or has this been talked about in the past? Well, if you want, uh, who is it who said the trash pile that is called staging? If you want to dabble in that, feel free. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's going really well. Because it's because the driver isn't, isn't doing Because this has also been a fairly common problem with actively maintained drivers with vendors' older hardware where they don't necessarily have the cards to test the older hardware with the drivers. And so it seems like it's sort of a, it's, it's a problem so that sort of extends it's beyond the specific case. Right? It's also partly, uh, uh, so yes, that, that comes into play because uh, one of the other, so I would say reason for, for all the breakage I'm seeing is that it's hard to get people to review and test ATA flags, ATA patches. But the, I, I, there are a lot of my pull requests. The patches are mine and mine only. There's not, not a review by tag on them because I don't, I can't get anybody to review and test. Yeah. And by ATA patches, you mean SATA patches or? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, that's a separate problem. I, it's related because in the end, I'm, I'm pushing stuff that I tested myself in my limited hardware environment so and that, that leads to breakage, yes. Just, just to go back to the staging point, staging is a problem, it's a trash fire because lots of people don't compile it. So we won't find out about any breakage we accidentally did until you know months and months and months down the road. That makes it a bigger problem to fix and a more difficult one because once people start squawking, Luna starts hearing and it suddenly becomes a massive emergency. If it's not in staging and it's in PATA, we have a, at least the compile failures we can pick up and hopefully people who are closer to this tree will also pick up other failures. Well, actually, that one, uh, that one, I worked a lot on it, the compile failures, and, and that, yeah. that's been cleaned up and fixed recently. But the, the testing for, for new features are being added to, to make sure there's no regression on all hardware. That's not something I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, tested by or reviewed by tags yeah. from people. So, And I know people out there are still using ATA, again, because I'm, I'm seeing, uh, I'm getting uh, reports for, of, of regressions. So. Um, well, so, and also moving things to staging doesn't really help um, because you still would need to update or fix dri drivers if you do any whatever interface changes to, to the library itself, meaning to lib ATA. The driver still will be affected, but it will be just in a different place, but it doesn't change anything, really. Yeah, so James, I think what you're saying is the current way that things are done is sort of it's working as designed in that, you know, if Damien goes and makes a change and it breaks something with PATA for some of the Excalonings platforms, they're going to complain. Yeah, and, and I mean, if find once out, no one so complains, you can leave it broken, mark it broken, remove it from the tree, but if someone's going to notice, you have to fix it because... Right. So yeah. you're saying this is the only way that we're going to find out is because the codes enable the people that are dependent on it will use it. And regarding the testing, there's always QEMU, and you can always emulate devices in QEMU. It's a pain, but, but well, that no, doesn't but get done, though. I, Q, I, QEMU has no. one type of plurality adapter, uh, CH9 or whatever it is. Uh, there are plenty more out there. And yes. the problem with plurality, you have the adapter, but you have the drives, too, and, and you get a ton of bu buggy drives connected. So whoever has those drives and you are not careful when you add a new feature and you hit, uh, I don't know, read log, uh, no DMA or whatever uh, uh, problem with that drive, you get a system hang and it's not booting anymore. Um, well, but he actually has a point. Uh, it should be possible to um, have a very simple 
Linux um, PHA drive emulated in Qlimit, including all pages and including It's, it's all not going to find these issues because the, the reason why Inquiry you know, ends up failing is because it's like a non-standards thing, right? And drivers never saw that. I think no amount of proactive testing in QMU will ever yeah. find the issues. I think the only sane uh, course of action here is to make LibATA more resilient <laughs> towards having this happen, right? So James said, have a PADA flag, right? That's fine. So you deal with that on like the inquiry and probe side of things. And then you just sort of split the issue path a little bit, right? So when you do make changes, like for new hardware, it doesn't really impact the old stuff. I think you just need to make LibAT more resilient so that whatever you do new stuff, right, will not touch any of the legacy things. Yep. Because you can't, I mean, we can't move things to staging or you're gonna have two different LibATAs, right? It's not, that's not gonna work. No, Most no, plus adaptive I, I, yeah, that, that wouldn't things. make sense, yeah. You just, you just need to have it so that you can make code changes and test it on new stuff and know it's never gonna affect any of the old things. It'll just keep working the way it has um, because that's the only, otherwise you're always just gonna be playing whack-a-mole with uh, somebody saying, oh, I'm running on a 2164 alpha, you know, with this drive and that fails now because you made this change and whatnot. If yep. you just ensure that all the old stuff keeps doing the same thing it's always been doing, then yep. you won't have any issues with it. And also, if you're, you're yeah, problem, I think that's the best approach, yeah. There is a community somewhere. If you just sent them copies of patches, they might actually look at them and test them out. That'll so, th months. what's it? Right, that'll, that'll, that'll take months, I think. I, I wasn't saying you wait for the answer. I was just saying you send the patches to them. If they don't reply, tough. So but at least they no, to right, but then they apply three months later, and then they're like, oh, okay, great. And now you're dealing with like three yeah, yeah, revisions of stable three patches months later things. Worse than a bug no, so I, I, yeah. I do. I you just do need to make it harder to happen. I think that's the only sane. So th solution. there, there are a lot of cases I see on Bugzilla. Um, uh, I, I do look at all regression and I try to fix them. I do send patches to people and tell them, can you try apply this build or kernel and then try it. We are dealing most of the time with regular users who don't know how to do that. Or the only way for them to do it is to actually compile a kernel on the, on the, on the hardware that is failing. And it's all hardware, it takes them one day to compile a kernel. <laughs> so it is hard to, to ask people to do that. So. But the, the, yes, so what you discussed, James and, and uh, Jens, the, the isolating uh, parallel ITA drive, all hardware, to not be touched by any new feature, I think is, is yeah, the best approach. And please review ATA patches. <laughs> That's all I had, so thanks. as well, but thanks everyone.